John and Abel heading back to try and land this third historic arc. How happy have you been with her preparation coming into the race, not just in terms of this year, but in relation to, to previous years as well? Well, there's no doubt as, as a three-year-old, it came very easily to her. She was up for anything. And I suppose young, full of exuberance and getting that weight allowance, she found it really quite easy. I mean, all her races were being won on the bridle by good margins. And then I probably, coming back as a four-year-old, we were quietly getting her ready in May to, to run at Royal Ascot. And she sustained an injury. And she did come back in September, won at Kempton, did that well, and then she got sick and had to be led out for a full week. Blood, blood count was wrong. So we went into that arc a little bit, not where we should be. And I, quite frankly, I think she, she won it. She won it through sheer guts and determination. And quite frankly, she was probably fortunate to win it. Um, and then she went straight on to America and uh, beat uh, Magical in the Breeders' Cup. So that was an interesting year. The five-year-old year being different, she, she was at the height of her powers. Um, there's no doubt about that. We brought her out in the Eclipse and she, she beat Magical again in the Eclipse. And then she went to the King George in that wonderful, wonderful race with Crystal Ocean where, you know, there was two great horses, two great jockeys. Frankie just one flick hands and heels. He said he had flu and felt a bit weak, but I don't know. <laughs> and, uh, and then obviously we, we, she went and won the Yorkshire Rose and there was Magical again in second. And on to Longchamp, and there's no doubt she was in great form going there, couldn't have had her happier in herself well. And, and I felt very much then rather like her three-year-old years, right at the zenith of her powers. And there's, there's no doubt she, she ran a wonderful race. I will always say they went too hard and too soon in testing ground and what happened was Valgais came and outstayed them at the end and put them in the place for being so silly as to go in the false straight and all the rules were getting broken left, right and centre in testing conditions. Uh, then I think for Prince Khalid to be the wonderful sporting owner that he is, to then say, well that didn't go quite right. I mean, he bred her, he owns her, enjoys watching her racing, he says, We'll go again. So here we are. <laughs> I think it's fair to say as a six-year-old, things changed in her metabolism. I haven't trained a filly at that age, you know. She's a big girl and uh, she put a lot of weight on through the winter, probably like the rest of us, keeping warm. And um, she, she was slightly like a big broodmare in the, in the end. It took a very long time just to edge her, edge her, edge her towards, towards race fitness talking to Frankie after the King George, he said there was almost a feeling that she maybe wasn't quite where she had been before. Did you feel that and, and what did you manage to do with her? What did you change in her routine to get the, the, the fire burning again? Well, I think, no, I, I think she found it terribly hard to get fit. I, I've made the analogy of the old boxer, the old champion boxer coming back and they're getting older. The metabolism's changed. Oh, I'm on the runs, I'm back in the gym. It's hard, it's mm. hard. She's always up for it, she's mentally strong, but she found it difficult to get to race fitness. The Eclipse put her right, and it put her right for the King George. And it was strange, in a sense, but there was a solid pace and a solid time. It wasn't run in a French bicycle race style, in the velodrome, you know, that kind of thing. Um, and to that extent, she, she put up a great performance. And to win a third King George has sort of made this whole year very worthwhile. So, but there's no doubt that as a six-year-old, Nothing comes as easily to as it did. And I would probably have to say, as a three-year-old, I discussed it, what she was, how she could take on the world. And again, as a five-year-old, as a very mature, but a bit like a boxer who, who fights with this as much as they do with speed, because some of the speed starts to just disappear to what it, they have when they're younger. And, and I suppose to that extent, she's very much the, the old pro now going into this arc. And Frankie as well, he's had six wins in the art, going for a, a seventh this year. How important has he been to the enabled story and the, the relationship both the jockey and horse have got together? Look, it's like uh, anything, you know, the, the stud farm, all of the people who fold them, bring them up, nurture them. Uh, and then all of my team, the wonderful people I have working with are here, we're checking, watching, we're, as with every horse in the yard, how's it eating, how's it feeling, feel the legs, check. The, you're spending your whole time looking for problems and... Uh, in a sense, and, uh, and if you say everything's all right, it means you've missed something. 
And so to that extent, she's had incredible care and attention, just like the others. But you do notice her a bit more because she carries herself so proudly. But it's very much down to them, and then it gets to the, to the jockey. So it's a bit like Lewis Hamilton. He wouldn't do very well without a lot of brilliant mechanics and designers and everyone putting his right. He can come in and say, just this or just that. And there's no doubt with Mr. Tatori when he's riding it, he comes in, he, he's the jockey, then he starts playing trainers too. And that's when you have to watch it. <laughs> he starts, uh, even, even the work on Saturday, I thought we just might want to clip. No, 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 it's fine, it's fine. I thought she, okay, you felt that, that's fine. But I'm still meant to be the trainer, you know, that's what it says on the license. But uh, no, look, he's, he's brilliant with her, he understands her, he adores her. Um, He's spent a, a little fortune on polo mints for her. And uh, if anything, he's gone a bit too soft on her, actually, <laughs> yes. <laughs> but it's, uh, it's not a bad thing when sentimentality and love come in. And, uh, and love, he's going to need plenty of that to take on the namesake. So, look, it's very exciting. And they'll probably go and get beaten by somebody else. <laughs> and if you put her into the context of Golden Horn and Stradivarius, Logician, Two Down Hot, Cracksman, Roaring Line, how do you reflect on the, the last few years in, in your trading career? I mean, it's been a, a golden period. Yeah, look, you're lucky if, if people breed and, and uh, they're mostly owner-bred horses. And, and I think, therefore, if you're lucky enough as a trainer to, to, to train for people and you've, you've trained the brothers, the sisters, the fathers, the mothers, whatever, and they send you horses, there's a great sense of continuity and fulfilment in it. So therefore, I've been very lucky that those horses have turned up, and I can assure you there have been plenty of slow ones as well. Um, but uh, ha having said that, with a filly like her, yeah, she, she's, she's just a lot of fun to be around. I mean, it's a, it's a responsibility, and it weighs a little heavy, to say the least, but aren't you lucky to have that responsibility? And, uh, and there's no doubt to be racing her at six. It's a very sporting, bold move, and... I think we go there with full hope that uh, it'll be a nice race and everybody gets a clear run because, you know, you can get trouble in arcs, get trouble in any race. And that, uh, you know, that she goes out as usual as she does. She, she, she's either, she either wins or she's just, or in the, you know, she's a couple of seconds late, late on at the end of in the autumn and uh, this year when she wasn't fully tuned, but she, she puts in a great performance. She does that then. We'll see. Prince Carlo will then decide after the race, win, lose or draw, what she does. It will not be my decision. He will ask me how she is and I'll speak to Teddy Grimthorpe and we'll all discuss it and then the decision will be made. So I'll leave that with him again. <laughs> and obviously very strange times at the moment, but emotionally for you, how difficult will it be there? Or how difficult will it be for you not to be there on Sunday? And, and if she does the go on to win? The only funny thing is, you know, she's got the people with her she knows, so that's fine. She doesn't need me to pat her on the nose. I will just miss the, the, we have a little ritual, Frankie and I, of walking the track. And I'll miss that because it's good for his nerves, it's good for mine, and you walk the whole track and we just stand in the stall that the, the runner will be in and we look down the track and we walk all the way around, we talk about how we think the race will come up and what he wants to do. That's called plan A. And so you've had a nice plan A and a good walk around the track. You, just chilled out from having, you know, gone on a train or flown in or something. And it's perfect. Then he goes to the weighing room to annoy everyone there. And I go and get a jambon sandwich or something. And I will miss that ritual because you actually talk about the whole race and how it might unfold. And, you know, his plan with Golden Horn, what he was going to do was quite extraordinary, which he did. Um, and, and, and even we've did it. And again, actually, when she won the arc first time at Shanti, he educated me about the track there. And he won that race in the first 400 meters. So that's what I'll miss, the great tactical plan. And both of those tactical plans came off. We got unstuck last year, but those two ones we're talking about came off. So that's what I'll miss more than anything. And then I'll, I'll just, uh, you know, I'll watch the race like everyone else. And speaking of emotions, if enable a bit like last year's kick clear, and one horse comes out of the pack and it's a horse with black colours and a yellow cap that comes and chins her on the line, how would you be feeling then? I don't know. I'll leave it up to Olivier and Frankie how, <laughs> what, what they do. The, the fact is, if, if, they, you know, if they run great races and finish in the first three, a six-year-old full horse and a six-year-old mare that's given so much pleasure uh, to people and the amount of fan mail she gets from Japan and America and Australia is unbelievable. 
Um, and they've given all that pleasure and they run big races. That's what it's about.